Lesson 44, Jesus is Raised In today's lesson we come to the final chapter in Mark's Gospel and the account of Jesus being raised from death. We will see how the disciples of Jesus found it difficult to believe the reports that Jesus was raised, and when the Lord appeared to them, he rebukes their lack of faith and hardness of heart. Many people today still have hardened hearts, refusing to believe the wonderful truth that Jesus rose and is alive today. Early in the morning, as the day was dawning, some of the women came to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. As they were coming to the tomb, they were discussing the problem of how to roll away the stone, since it was too heavy for them to move by themselves. But as they approached the tomb, they saw that the stone had already been rolled away. At the tomb, the women met an angel. Mark describes him as a young man, but we know from the other gospel writers that this was an angel. The angel told the women to inform the disciples that Jesus was risen from the dead, and they should make plans to meet him in Galilee. The women were overcome by amazement and fear, and quickly fled from the tomb back towards the city. It was Mary Magdalene who was the first person to meet the resurrected Lord Jesus that morning, and after she saw the Lord, she once again returned into the city to report to the other disciples that she had seen him, but they did not believe her report. There were two others later in the day who were walking to Emmaus, a few miles away from Jerusalem, and also met Jesus as they walked along. Luke tells us this story in more detail and we know that at first they do not recognize who Jesus was. But after he broke bread with them, their eyes were opened, and they knew it was Jesus risen from the dead. They also returned back to the city to announce that Jesus is risen. But still the other disciples do not believe the news. Then at last Jesus appears to the eleven disciples as they sat together at the table. Jesus rebukes his disciples for their lack of faith and for the hardness of their hearts. Jesus instructs his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone. Clearly, the few disciples that Jesus spoke to would not be able to fulfill this task in their lifetimes. And so today, the faithful followers of Jesus are still seeking to preach the gospel message to the whole world. Because Christianity has spread to so many parts of the world, and so many different Christian groups and missionaries are carrying the message around the globe, it seems that the whole world is within reach of the gospel message. Jesus told his disciples that they could expect certain results as they went out preaching in his name, and these include the salvation of souls. As the word of God was proclaimed to the nations, people would hear, understand, repent, and believe. This is not because of anything in man, but because God would open their hearts and they would believe. Also, the apostles were given miraculous signs to authenticate their ministry as coming from God. This gave them power to cast out demons, speak in foreign languages they had not previously learned, not to be harmed by the bite of poisonous snakes, and heal those they laid hands on. As Jesus promised this to his apostles, we see that they indeed were given all of these miraculous signs as seen in the early days of the church and with the spread of the gospel during the book of Acts. We must be careful to understand that these signs were given to the apostles and early church and were not intended by God to be used throughout the church age. Many today want to claim they can do these miraculous things in the name of Jesus. When we understand why God used the apostles to perform miracles, that these were signs, and that today the signs have been replaced with something superior, namely the completed New Testament writings, we see the signs are no longer needed. This is what we can see from the history of the early church, from the teachings of the New Testament and also from church history following the completion of the New Testament. It has only been in the last 100 years or so that there has been 
a renewed fascination with miraculous signs, many claiming the ability to heal and many churches trying to imitate the gift of tongues of the early church days. We are far better off to not become preoccupied with miracles as that which we need to support our faith, but to believe God's word, faithfully obey what we learn, and proclaim the gospel message to others. As we end Mark's gospel and the account of the resurrection of Jesus, Mark tells us that Jesus was taken up to heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus is not visible to our physical eyes, but we may see him and know him by faith. We may know that he conquered death and can offer to us eternal life when we trust in him as our Savior. But in order to be saved, we have to believe that Jesus is risen and alive today. Some cannot believe because their hearts are hardened. But what about you? Do you believe Jesus rose from the dead? And have you trusted in him as your Savior? Why not trust in him today? He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Mark chapter 16, verse 16.